Okay, so we're now up to chapter 9. I think we're going to 13, so we're getting the next, this month is going to be kind of fast. Um, but we'll be back, we'll be going back over our SN1s and SN2s, so you can't forget those. I'm going to start with, um, we're going to do E1 today, and so E1, here's my, here's my question about E1. Does it involve, do you think for E1, will there be a carbocation intermediate? Yes or no? When we talk about our E1 mechanism, is it going to involve a carbocation, yes or no? Another few seconds for those of you to answer that haven't. Is there anybody who hasn't answered? Anybody else? If you're here, you should get participation points. Okay. Yes or no, Aisha? And almost everybody agrees with you. Good. I would have been disappointed if it would have been a lot lower than that. So one means we have a carbocation intermediate. Two means that we don't. So E1 is going to be very similar to SN1. And before we start E1, I want to talk about you know our different leaving groups. So when we've had when we've had our alkyl halides where X is a halogen as a leaving group, we really haven't had to do anything to it. It's a leaving group. Iodine's a better leaving group than chloride, but still the halogen can leave. We're going to start working with alcohols. And is OH a good leaving group? All 
right. <coughs> yes or no? Is everybody answered? It's going to answer. What do you think? Not. Let's see if everybody agrees with you. Oh. More agree than disagree. The answer is no. OH minus is not a good, or OH is not a good leaving group because OH minus would be considered a stronger base. So OH minus then is not going to leave on its own. So what do we have to do to it? We have to protonate it. So if I protonate my alcohol and that converts it into that oxonium ion, what does that oxonium ion look like? When it leaves, what's it going to become? Water. Looks like a water molecule. Sometimes people call it an, an incipient water molecule. So when we break the carbon-oxygen bond and we give the pair of electrons to the oxygen, we now make water and the carbocation. So my point here is that when we work with alcohols, and we can work with alcohols in SN1 and SN2 reactions, right? What did we do in lab last week? We did a 45-minute reflux where we took a primary alcohol, added sulfuric acid as the H+, and then Br- as the anion. So we've done that and the reason we had to add the acid was and a strong enough acid was that we need to make the OH leave and the only way to make it leave is to protonate it and make it an, a, a water molecule. Okay, So when we do E1s and we use alcohols which is what we're going to do we're going to need to protonate that with an acid but we have a choice of acids. So first of all, what is E1? E1 is elimination. So a generic elimination reaction looks like this. For an alkyl halide, I'm going to lose HX and I'm going to form a double bond. For an alcohol, I'm going to lose H2O and form an alkene. 
So elimination is when you form an alkene. Substitution is when you do substitution. So there's four different S, N, and E combinations. There's SN1, SN2, E1, and E2. So we're going to do E1, and then the next one we'll do is E2. And one thing we will know is we know E2 will not have a carbocation, but E1 does. Okay, so let's look at this reaction in a little bit more detail. Let's do alkyl halides first. So let's, let's do a real one. Let's say I take CH3, CHCl, CH2, CH3. And I do an E1 mechanism. So what's going to happen in the first step of the E1 mechanism is I'm going to break my carbon-chlorine bond and I'm going to form my carbocation. Pretty boring, right? Because that first step is the same step as breaking the carbon halogen bond to form a carbocation is also the first step of what reaction? Of SN1. So E1 and SN1 go together. Now the question is, will a nucleophile come in and add to that carbocation, at which point it's SN1, or will I lose one of the beta hydrogens? Now you're going, beta hydrogens, where have I heard that before? Well, again, this book tries to give you a heads up on things and it hopes you remember them months later, or weeks later, or days later. So remember what was our alpha and beta terminology. Alpha was when the alpha carbon is the carbon that's attached to the leaving group. Next to that is a beta, or beta carbons, and then attached to those would be gamma carbons, although in this case we don't care. And when you have an alpha carbon is going to become the carbocation, you have your beta carbons, and then you have your beta hydrogens. So the beta hydrogens are attached to the beta carbons. And it's just easier to do, it's easier to say that term beta because otherwise I'd have to say the hydrogen attached to the carbon attached to the carbon attached to the leaving group. the beta hydrogen. Okay. So if you remember back in chapter whatever it was, you had to identify all the beta hydrogens. And the reason they brought that into play is because now we're going to use it. Okay. So hopefully that's more review than fresh learning. Okay, so now what's going to happen is I'm going to lose a beta hydrogen. And I have two. I have HA and HB. So if I lose HB, or sorry, H beta hydrogen HA, I'm going to form, and I'm going to go ahead and write the transition state in here, because this is the first time we'll have a multiple So our transition state is going to show the making and the breaking of a bond. So in this case, we are breaking the CH bond and we are making the CC double bond. So that's where the dashed lines go. I'm ultimately going to form the H plus and my final product. which I'll call product A. So what charges should I have in the transition state and where should they go? The hydrogen 
So this should be delta positive. Okay. What else should have a delta positive? Katie? Which, this one? Yeah, that one. Okay. So again, average. This carbon, the alpha carbon, plus one, zero, delta plus. Hydrogen, zero, plus one, delta plus. So again, if we look at this, we're forming a double bond, we're losing the H, the plus charge is going from the carbon to the H plus. That's going to be lost. So there's product A. So could you write the transition state for losing beta hydrogen B? And if you did that, you would have exactly the same thing. The hydrogen that's being lost is delta positive. The carbon in, that's the carbocation is delta positive. When the H plus leaves, you're going to form the double bond now in the middle of the molecule. So that's going to be product B. Does that make sense to everybody? Now, I made two products. What's my next question going to be? Which is the major product? Which product is going to be formed the most? Anybody have an idea, Melanie? B? Anybody agree with that? That B is going to be the major product? You're not getting any help. Ben? Yeah, I thought it was also good because it seems like the B, where the double bond is, the other carbon is right I think the other carbons are also like this. Carbons dissolve on all the natural carbons. Okay. The other one is only like one size, kind of a little weight. Okay. For the stability, the alpha proof has attached to double bond. Oh, wait, we jumped the stability already. So you chose B because B is the most. Okay, but what does that mean? It means it's more stable. So you chose B because it's more stable. Okay. Anybody's memory being jogged about stability of alkenes? Which alkenes are more or less stable? Apparently nobody else's memory is being is being jogged. It kind of makes you wonder if the people who wrote the book, this whole let's introduce it early so that they will remember it. I guess you have to introduce it like 
what, 30 minutes before? But you're right. So in this reaction, what we're going to do is we're going to form the more stable alkene. But then we have to remember what the rules for stabilities of alkenes are. The more stable the alkene, the more blank it is. What's the blank? Remember an alkene, and I'm, and I'm, I'm sort of, kind of, it's kind of jogging my memory that I might have said, oh, well, we'll just talk about this a little bit and then we'll talk about it more now or when we need to, which is now. So maybe I didn't, I didn't push it as much. An alkene can have four different things attached to it or up to four things. What makes the alkene more stable? If I attach what kind of group, Katie? Oh, I was going to say more substituted. Bingo, that's it. More substituted. The more substituted the double bond, the more stable it is. So when you attach an alkyl group to a double bond, here's what happens. And I'm getting a strong sense of deja vu with this answer. So when you have a carbon and a hydrogen, the hydrogen's delta positive and the carbon's delta negative. Anybody else having deja vu on that point? Then it pushes the electron density into the double bond. Because the double bond wants to get electron density, and the more electron density it gets, the more stable it is. So whenever you attach an alkyl group to a double bond, you make it more stable. So the more substituted, the more substituted the double bond, the more stable it is. So when we do an E1 mechanism, E1 major product is always the most stable product. And that was, that was found by a Russian chemist called, and it, there, the name gets, the name was probably translated into German, then into English. So it's either Z A I T E V or S A Y T Z E F F. I think the Z is the more popular. So this is called Zaitsev's rule. And so Zaitsev's rule says when he did a whole bunch of elimination reactions, he always found that the major product of the reaction was the more substituted double bond. Now what he was doing was he was doing dehydration reactions, which we'll do in a minute. He was using alcohols. So it doesn't matter. We now know that anything that goes through E1 will always form the more stable product. The more stable product is the more substituted double bond. Okay. So I feel like I should. Ask, I feel like I need to ask another question. Let's say that. <coughs> I have this molecule and I'm going to do an E1 on it. Now you can write the products. You don't have to necessarily go through the mechanism. All you have to do is say, oh, there's my alpha carbon, there's my beta carbon, there's my other beta carbon. Do those beta carbons have hydrogens? Yes, because if they don't, you're not forming the double bond there. So 
that means that of my two my two products would look like this there's a and b and then what i could do is i could write some other random double bonds but they wouldn't be the correct answer because only the double bond that forms from the alpha and the beta carbon is the correct is the correct answer. Well, unless we do some re carbocation rearrangements. So, which one of those two is the major product, A or B? And if you're unsure about the number of alkyl groups that are attached to the double bond, put the hydrogens in. Because remember, a carbon, carbon double bond has four things. If two of them are hydrogens, then two of the other are alkyl groups. So if you're unsure, put the hydrogens in and count them up. And then subtract from four. So which one is the major product? And in other words, which one is the most stable product or most stable alkene? Right. Right. Do I have an answer from everybody? Still no Wi-Fi? Oh, there's a thing right there. Oh, good. It's the guest, the guest thing goes berserk. And then add your own goes berserk. I don't know. There was a day when we didn't have these luxuries in the classroom. I know you can never remember that day, but I can. Wow. 100% B. We should just end class. Because you're all correct. So how many alkyl groups are attached to B? The double bonded B. Three. And how many are attached to A? Two. Okay. So that's Saitsev's rule. So Saitsev, Saitsev didn't know about E1 or E2. He didn't know about carbocations. What he knew was that when you did an elimination reaction, you got the most substituted product. That's what he knew, and so that became the rule. So when we do E1, we're always going to get the more substituted product. So these are alkyl halides. And again, the issue with the alkyl halide is, if I go back here, when I lose my alkyl halide, when I lose my halide and form my carbocation, the question is of timing. Does the nucleophile come in and add to the carbocation? Substitution. Do I lose the H plus? Then it's elimination. So what we find is that SN1 is accompanied by E1 and vice versa. So remember we made that nice chart Everywhere the chart says, S, S, says SN1, it should also say SN1 plus E1. Because whenever we get SN1, we're going to get E1 as well. Okay. Now, to do an E1 with an alkyl halide is kind of, it's, it's difficult. It's just a side reaction. right? But with alcohols, um, when we do this E1 mechanism with alcohols, or we could do possibly an E2, 
um, we have to think about a couple things. So let's say I wanted to take a, I'm going to take this tertiary alcohol and I would like to convert it to these two alkenes. And according to our rules, those two alkenes both have three alkyl groups attached to them, and so they would be of the same stability. Although having the double bond inside the ring and having the double bond outside the ring might be a little bit different. But for the most part, we're going to say these are the products that we get. But how am I going to do this reaction? Well, I need to add H+. Plus right? I need to protonate the OH group to make it leave. So if I start by taking my OH and protonating it, I'm going to get my oxonium ion. And then this is a tertiary carbon attached to the oxonium ion. So can the oxonium ion leave? In other words, when you have a tertiary carbon attached to an oxonium ion, can it leave and form a stable carbocation? And the answer is if my water molecule leaves, what kind of carbocation am I going to form? What kind of carbocation is that? Primary, secondary, or tertiary? Tertiary? Is it stable? Yes. So I'm going to lose my water molecule and I'm going to make my tertiary carbocation. Okay. Now, before I go any further, Let's talk about well, where did the H plus come from? Because I just can't throw in H plus. Last week you couldn't have just thrown in H plus to your reflux. Right? It's got to come from somewhere. So let's say I reacted HCl with the alcohol. That's the source of H plus, right? So the OH reacts with the H+, plus. I form my carbocation, but what does the Cl do? If I used HCl, I've now got a Cl- minus floating around, what's it going to do? It's going to attack the carbocation. And what am I going to make? I'm going to make the tertiary alkyl halide. Is that what I wanted? No. So we need to be careful when we want to do elimination that we don't have the counter ion of the acid, or I guess the conjugate base of the acid, cannot be a good nucleophile. So HCl, HBr, HI, out. Can't use those for eliminations. I can use them for substitutions. And what do we do in lab? We use sulfuric and sodium bromide. So we had an H plus source and then we had the halide. Could we have done that reaction with HBr? Yeah, we could have we could have reacted our primary alcohol with HBr to do our substitution reaction. And why we don't do that, I'm not quite sure. Other than the last 25 years I've done it with sulfuric. So I need an acid that doesn't have a good nucleophile as its conjugate base. Well, there's our acid. How about I use H2SO4 as my acid? 
because then I'm going to end up with HSO4 minus as the conjugate base. Oh, here's a little chance for some review. So we agree that sulfuric acid is a strong acid. It was in general chemistry. Why wouldn't it be now? So it's going to be a strong acid. HSO4 minus is going to be what kind of base? Yeah, really, really weak, right? It's not even going to act as a base. Why? Here's the structure of HSO4 minus. Why is it a weak base? Katie? Exactly. It's stable. The more stable it is, the weaker it is as a base. And so if it's really stable because of all the resonance structures you can draw, it's not going to be a good nucleophile. Another acid that we sometimes use is H3PO4, phosphoric, same principle. Phosphoric acid, the first proton is a strong, it's a strong acid, and then it's stable so that you don't get the, the conjugate base being a good nucleophile. People have also argued with me that this is kind of hysterically hindered. And I'd agree. But given those two things, it's not going to act as a nucleophile. So when I want to do this reaction, I'm going to use H2SO4, and I'm also going to use heat. And the little triangle means heat. And I'm going to get the alkenes. I'm also going to get water. So when you want to do the reagents you want to use as your H plus is sulfuric or phosphoric acid. If you use HCl or HBr or HI, you're going to do SN1. But you want to do E1, use the sulfuric acid. So that's the essence of E1. You can do it with an alkyl halide, although setting out to do it with an alkyl halide is really difficult because if there's any nucleophile there, it'll get substituted. But when you do substitution, when you do an SN1, you always get some E1 product as well. When you want to do this with an alcohol, you need to react it with sulfuric acid as your acid source. You protonate the OH, it leaves, and it gives you then the carbocation, which gives you then the final alkene product. Because there's no nucleophile to come in and add. It just loses H+. Plus. So E1 is kind of a review of SN1. Except now we have these new things to worry about. The major product being the most substituted one. And we also could end up with carbocation shifts. As part of this mechanism. Everybody with me? Well, there's a couple ways I could find that out.
Okay, here's the reaction. Sulfuric acid plus that cyclohex that cyclohexanol. I've given you some products. Question number one. And I'm going to make this a text. I'm going to make this a text answer. So write the capital capital letter of the major product or products. If there's more than one, you can write multiple letters. <clears throat> so question number one, what's the major product of this reaction or products with no rearrangement? So with no rearrangement, what's the major product or products of this reaction? <coughs> Anybody else? There's 29 people here. And remember, these are not graded correct or incorrect. They're graded participation. So if you're not participating, you don't get participation points. If, you're, if you don't want to tell me, tell me after class. My thing didn't hook up or I didn't bring a device. All right, let's see what we get. What was the question? Major product without rearrangement. Uh oh. How many different answers do we have? A, A, B, A. to be here let me be more specific if I can give me the capital letter of the major product and then if there's another major product write it in a capital letter next to the first capital letter with no spaces, no ands, just the letter of the major product or products. So if it's A, capital A. If it's A and B, capital A, capital B. Okay. Then I don't have to sort through all the answers. <coughs> then I can see how we're doing. better 
So 18 people say A only. Okay. Good. A is the major product of this reaction without rearrangement. Why? Without rearrangement. Because when I lose my, when I protonate my OH group and it leaves, I'm going to get my carbocation. And without rearrangement, I've got two hydrogens on either side that I can lose. A is going to be the more substituted product. So without rearrangement, A is my major product. What about with, last one, with rearrangement? If I was to have a carbocation rearrangement occur, what would be the major product or products of that reaction? So I just did this with the plus charge starting there. If it was to undergo a carbocation rearrangement, where would the plus charge end up? And then where it ends up, what would be the major product of that alkene formation? Gone once, twice, okay. Interesting. I protonate the OH group and it leaves, there's my carbocation. Which hydrogen is going to migrate? The one on the left or the one on the right? Yeah. One on the left? We agree? So the one on the left is going to migrate. That's going to put the plus charge here. Which hydrogen is going to be lost to form the major product? HA or HB? Now HA, there's two HAs that could be lost and they would give the same product. So which one of those is going to be lost to form the major product? A, B, both. Give me the correct answer and you can leave. What? A only? And Next answer. It's both because with the double bond in A, there's one, two, three alkyl groups, and with C, there's one, two, three alkyl groups as well. So both A and B can be lost, so that means A and C would be the major products of that reaction. Okay, so. 
that's E1, and we have, you, you want to work through being able to identify the more stable alkene because that's going to be the major product. On Wednesday, I'm going to give you a two more take-home mechanisms, problems to do, and one of them is going to be E1. Um, we'll finish up, I think, whatever we have left here in Chapter 9 and move to Chapter 10. I'll update the Canvas site today with all the readings. But Chapter 9, you should go back and look at if you haven't and start doing some of those problems. Right. Otherwise, I'll see you on Wednesday.